Carolyn, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So I've seen now both of the movies that you have you, you have coming out back to back. <laughs> um because I'm a big Spider-Man nerd. So the minute that the press invite went out for into the Spider-Verse, I was like, or across the Spider-Verse, I was like, yep, I'm coming. I'll be there. In the <laughs> uh, but you do have these two big kind of franchise movies coming out back to back. What has it been like switching gears from Spider-Man and going into Transformers? I don't think I have switched gears. I feel like I'm just rolling with it I mean you kind of have to they're such big machines mm -hmm. you know what I mean and and I've I, I guess I sort of had an idea that it might be like this but not really um even the projections for how the film would do how it would be received this is it's all been blown out of the water um so I feel like I'm just you know kind of floating along on this this cloud and it feels pretty wild well, yeah, and it is, uh, to start with Spider-Verse, it is one of those movies that, like, I believe when I went and saw Into the Spider-Verse, they just were like, oh, it's an animated Spider-Man movie. So I went for work to write the review, and it ended up being one of those movies that I was just like, this is game-changing. And for someone who I grew up watching Spider-Man movies, it was weird to kind of have that feeling. And it has been correctly toted as, like, the best Spider-Man movie to exist, but Rio obviously plays such an important part in Miles' story. What did you, how did you kind of like craft your voice performance to like a character that is in the first movie, she's not in it that much and she has a little bit more in the second one, but like, how did you kind of navigate making that so poignant for audiences? I think it's all pretty organic, you know? They they introduced her in the first one and we got a sense of of how she operates, but you know, it's part of the work we do. It's it's in there. It gets baked in the beginning when you're creating the character. So it just, she just continues to breathe in the second one. But I love that they gave her this opportunity to just uh, let us know how she feels about her son, about her son turning, going from being a little man, you know, her little man into a young man and all that stuff, you know, she sees him with a girl and her sensing that there's something else going on with him, intuiting that there's a bigger secret. I think all of that is, you know, and of course, obviously the writers, which they, I mean, have done such an incredible job and the directors with letting us sort of even flesh it out and find it, honestly, uh, all of that, all of those things together I think really help to make the character feel um just more grounded in in being a human being and I really do like too that like she is constantly just trying to do the best by her son because even when we get to see her the movie's out so we can talk about it but even when we get to see her kind of in the next universe and she doesn't have Jefferson with her but she does like it is still her just trying to do right by Miles I like that she's different but also not like it's still rooted in her like need to protect her son did you guys have conversations about like how that Rio would be different than like the one we had gotten used to in the previous universe we did and so the weird thing is you don't know what's coming we don't get a complete script it's mm -hmm. just these are, this is what you'll be voicing. This is what's happening with Rio. So they kept trying to explain to me <laughs> that this isn't Rio, this is Rio in a different universe. And I was like, huh, I don't understand. <laughs> but, but what universe is she in? They're like, uh, just a different one. I'm like, well, how does this happen? Can you tell me what happens? They're like, she's just in a different universe and she's Rio, but not Rio. She's Rio, and imagine Rio if these, you know, under this set of circumstances, which is pretty much how they explained it, and just be that Rio. And so that was a really interesting thing to, to work with and come up with, and then see it in context. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, this makes perfect sense as to why she would be there, because her essence is still there. Like you said, she's still, this is the Rio that we love. You can see that she loves her son and she's protective, but obviously life has made her a little bit different. She's a little bit tougher. Yeah. And I, I obviously like, I'm a nerd. So I have a bunch of questions because like, I know between the two movies, 
Jefferson went from going under Jefferson Davis when he was a police officer to Jefferson Morales. And so I'm like, I, I want the scene where they have that conversation because like, I always assumed it was both, you know, uh, Miles's heritage that like, in, in a lot of uh, Spanish culture, like you take your mother's name. So I always assumed it was that mixed with Jefferson being a cop, but like, I now need that conversation of like how they <laughs> came around to that. But did you I guys love to see that? By the way, I so love cool. to see that scene. Did you guys get to? I obviously you only got your scenes, but did you get to talk about like those little detail changes that happened between the two movies? No, not this, not that particular thing. They, it was just like he's taken the name Morales. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty much I was like, cool, that's really awesome. Like, yes. <laughs> but we didn't really have a conversation about it. They just let me know that that was happening. And I thought it was a wonderful idea. I love that idea. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, wow, Jefferson's progressive. He was like, that's I'm taking my wife's name. It's fine. <laughs> he rolls like that. He's totally progressive. I mean, this conversation, it's this great conversation with Spider-Man. I love how he's befriended Spider-Man and understands he's here. I can't fight this it would be foolish mm -hmm. so why not make him an ally but this wonderful conversation that takes place when he's saying he doesn't really know how to connect with his son and you know spider-man is like maybe you should just uh you know do his big voice it's it's so sweet it's so lovely yeah it's so cute too because i just uh what i really liked about it because it's like obviously miles morales was based somewhat off of donald glover so i love that donald glover is now twice connected to a Miles Morales story, like for three times, I think it is, he is yeah. connected to a Miles Morales story. <laughs> um, but I do love kind of the switch in like Jefferson being friends with Spider-Man because most of the cops in the Spider-Man universe are like, I'm not dealing with this guy. Like I hate him. <laughs> so look at Miles' dad. They're friends. It. <laughs> They're friends. Um, but then you get to go be another mom in Brooklyn, which I do think is very funny that they are both Brooklyn-based moms. I mean, just coincidence. <laughs> Straight up coincidence. And I mean, it's it's wild, right? It's really, yeah. it's really cool. It's cool. And I, I liked Transformers a lot because I, I live near Bushwick. And so to hear like, the Williamsburg Bridge, I was like, okay, someone clearly knows that's how you get to Bushwick, but then it was like Knickerbocker and I was like, oh, 100% knows Bushwick. Yeah, um, I think those nods to Brooklyn were really great. I love that they just peppered it, you know, yeah. about the film. It was so cool, but obviously she's, she's a working mother who's trying to like make enough money to save one of her children while her older kid has to take care of them and take mm -hmm. over. She's, it's a smaller role, but like you do such a great job of like right yeah. off the bat we know her deal and we're like great I'm on her side she's trying to help her kids did you though wish you got to like be in a room with a transformer because it is a transformers <laughs> movie and she is like the heart storyline but doesn't get to be with the transformer well you know when I saw Anthony's character get in that suit I was like Man. wow like I bet she would, Brianna would kill that scene. <laughs> and that was a shock. I, I had no idea that that was, that was what was going to happen. Um, but I, I do love in, in both films, what they have in common is it ultimately goes back to family, which I think for me is super important. I am very close to my family. You know, I grew up in a big family. My Dad was a cop. Talk about some of these. It's kind of crazy. And um, I think all of these things that really resonate with me personally. And sometimes, you know, art imitates life. And I feel like that's that that moment for me is really wonderful right now. That's part of what I'm really loving about all of it. And um, yeah, I, I do wish that she had gone <laughs> to Peru. Uh, but I don't know, maybe the next one, who knows? <laughs> the next one, she's talking to Optimus Prime. <laughs> she's she's negotiating with him, saying, mira, papa, listen. <laughs> well, and obviously, though, like, both of these movies are part of franchises that, like, fans can probably hope we'll see another Transformers with these characters because it's kind of, like, how it is built. 
and we know we're getting another Spider-Verse movie. What is hope? What are your hopes for both of these characters? Like, what is like what you want out of the next movie? Because I know there's a story for Beyond the Spider-Verse, but it's not filmed yet. So like, what do you hope that they get to do? To be in both of them. <laughs> like, Rio gotta come back. <laughs> and then after that, um, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I already kind of know what's happening in the next spider Man, but obviously I can't say, or, you know. And I'm one of those people, I'm like, don't tell me. I want to be, <laughs> don't tell me, I want to I wanna see it. Um, I think it's going to, I think it's really going to surprise people. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And the next Transformers, I would just love to know more about Brianna and also have her enter into that world, you know, because typically it's, oh, it's the, the younger kids who mm -hmm. are exposed to that, but I love the dynamic of humans and these alien transformers uniting forces, you know, trying to to save each save their own world. And I think there's a really great opportunity for for Brianna me and for other characters to to be part of that as well. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I I have one last quick question because I know it's happening. Sony said it's happening, but we just don't know for who and when. But there is a live action Miles coming. Would you want to play Rio in that one too? Um, let me think about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Oh. I love the story. I love the story. I love the, the film. This is something we need right now. Both of these stories really deal with a lot of what's going on, you know, not only personally with these characters, but all these different forces going on in the world. And I think part of that is what resonates with audiences as well and they, there's a feel-good component to to both of them you know facing adversity and coming out on the other side and I think we can all use that yeah uh, thank you so much for talking with me like I, I truly am like I have a Spider-Man tattoo on my wrist like I'm a huge huge Spider-Man fan and I love these movies very very much Oh, I love that. That's great. I might get the Spider-Man tattoo as well because I'm, it's like, I'm in all the way. <laughs> just get a whole frame tattooed on your back of <laughs> just the one of Rio Miles and Jefferson in school, just like on your back. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You're so welcome. Thank Have you. a great, Have a great one. Bye.